You just wrote the perfect song. But your audio sucks. You have a perfect idea for a webcast, but your audio sucks. Wait, wait, wait. People on YouTube are going to love your videos, but the audio sucks. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about audio and how you can get that perfect professional sound. Don't, don't ask me why I'm holding these like this. Audio. Audio quality. It's one of the most important sources in media today. In fact, if you're uploading or you're relaying something in bad quality, then people are likely not to take you serious or they won't even listen at all. You're probably listening to me right now because I have pretty decent quality. That's because I have decent equipment and it's affordable. But if I was recording the whole video like this, then you probably wouldn't pay attention to me now, would you? Bad quality is just annoying. Hmm. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to get your quality sounding good. In fact, you're probably watching this video right now because you're wanting to enhance your audio quality. I'm going to get you there. I'm going to hold your hand. We're going to be all right. We're going to the top. We're going to get you sounding professional. Yeah. But before we get to sounding professional, I first have to teach you some basics because these basics are important. If you don't understand the basics, then you're probably just going to do a big old circle and be back where you started from. Yes, you want better audio quality, but you don't learn the basics, then you're going to end up with bad audio quality because you don't know what you're doing. So seriously, stick with me in this video, and this is going to be a multi-part series, and we're going to start at the foundation and get it right. The most commonly used mics fall into three different categories. You have your dynamic mic, your condenser mics, and then your USB mics. Let's start with the dynamic mic. In most dynamic mics, a very thin, lightweight diaphragm moves in response to sound pressure. Dynamic mics are also less sensitive to sound pressure levels in high frequencies versus condenser mics and generally can take more punishment. They last quite a bit longer. They also tend to be less expensive. Dynamic mics are also perfect for drums and electric guitars. Now, like anything else in this world, there's some pros and there's some cons to using a dynamic mic. One of the cons of, the, of using a dynamic mic is it really doesn't naturally pick up that heavy and that loud of a sound compared to a condenser mic. You really need something like an exciter and maybe a preamp or something behind the microphone to really push out that audio quality. Also, another con of using a dynamic mic is when you're speaking into the mic and you slightly move to the left or slightly move to the right, then the quality of your sound will actually change. With these dynamic mics, you really need to be directly in front of the diaphragm in order for your sound quality to stay consistent. Uh, this is why these type of mics aren't really popular in broadcasting or even recording YouTube videos because we tend to explain ourselves and sway to the left or sway to the right like I'm doing now and just having that fluctuating audio quality can be annoying. Now condenser mics usually have a much larger diaphragm versus a dynamic mic. The diaphragm vibrates slightly in response to sound pressure. Condenser mics are usually more expensive compared to dynamic mics. A battery or dedicated power supply or phantom power is required to power these mics. When it's absolute fidelity to the source you're after, reach for a condenser microphone. It will give you the quality that you are looking for. Like the dynamic mic, there's some pros and cons to these condenser mics also. One of the cons of using a condenser mic is that these things pick up audio really well, probably too well. So well that a slightest touch can be recorded and picked up through the microphone. Uh, if you touch a nearby surface, these things can pick them up. Uh, one way to stop that from happening is actually investing in shock mounts, and that's these little black mounts that you see attached to these microphones. These actually absorb vibrations so a touch or a stomp or the slightest shock to the microphone won't be picked up. Another kind of using condenser mic is that they require an external power source. You can't just plug these things directly into your computer or into your soundboard and expect to actually start recording. No, you actually need an external power source such as phantom power or batteries to power these microphones. Now, condenser mics are probably the most commonly used microphones in broadcasting. That's because they record omnidirectional. And what I mean by that is that I can move to the left or slightly move to the right 
and it won't affect the quality of my audio, not like the dynamic mics will. Uh, in fact, a good microphone, a good condenser microphone will pick up in all directions, and that's really what you want in broadcasting. Now this brings us to USB mics. USB mics contain all the elements of a traditional microphone, capsule, diaphragm, etc. Now where USB mics really differ from other microphones is its inclusion of two additional circuits, an onboard preamp and an analog to digital converter. That is, you don't have to depend on an external source to power a USB mic, it has an onboard preamp to power it. Also, you don't have to depend on an external source to convert the analog signal to a digital signal. There again, it's done within the microphone. USB mics normally plug directly into a USB port, therefore you don't have to depend on any other equipment to actually run the microphone. Now, USB mic is perfect for podcasting. You can produce some really good audio quality with a USB mic if you're podcasting. But like any other microphone, a USB mic has its pros and cons. One of the cons of using a USB mic is that the audio to digital converters and the preamp is built on the microphone board itself. These are usually of lesser quality. Also, another kind of a USB mic is that the short cables that some of them come with can introduce fan noises. Not every USB mic is like this, but there are some USB mics out there with short cables and very low quality cords, thus introducing different type of digital noises. So if you're going to buy a USB mic, make sure you buy a recommended well-known brand. So I can sit here and talk about microphones all day long, but I want you guys to kind of get your ears on experience in regards to what type of quality each microphone puts out. So uh, let's test these one by one and see what they can do. Now this is the quality of a dynamic microphone. Notice that I'm standing directly in front of the microphone. I can slightly move over to the left and you can hear the audio quality change. Now I'm right back to the center. Then I can slightly move over to my right and you can tell that the audio quality changes. Now I'm right back to the center. Now this is the audio quality of a condenser mic. Notice I can move slightly over to the left and the audio quality doesn't change that much. I can also move slightly over to the right and the audio quality still doesn't change that much. This is the quality of a condenser mic. Now this is the quality of a USB microphone. I can slightly move over to the left and there you have it. Back to the center. Then I can slightly move over to the right and there you have it. Now I'm back to the center. This is the quality of a USB microphone. Now let's recap on some of the things that we learned in this video. Dynamic mics are great for stationary dynamic recording, meaning that as long as the audio source is stationary, these microphones work perfectly. However, it does require a little more effort to achieve a more heavier and full sound when using a dynamic mic. Dynamic mics do not pick up high frequencies very well, and because they have no external power source, the weight and sound of the dynamics is usually much lighter. Condenser mics are really all around great mics. Condenser mics do require an external power source and they are very sensitive to sound. You'll more than likely have to invest into extra equipment to achieve the full quality potential of a condenser mic. USB mics are great for podcasting and vlogs. They require no external equipment for operation other than a computer. USB mics have its preamp and AD converters built on board. These are usually of lesser quality, thus having an effect on your overall sound quality. However, professional audio still can be achieved very easily with USB mics. Professional sound quality can be achieved with any of the three microphone types we spoke about depending on the quality of that mic and the experience of the user. I hope you guys learned a little bit while we scratched the surface of sound and microphones. In the next video, we'll be discussing outboard equipment and also audio processing and how you can get the best sound out of the equipment you already have. Till next time, this is Lewis Beasley. Sound you later. Thank <laughs> you.